there is a question sometimes or there is a statement from a big guru that the whole of the existence is infinite and usually everybody accepts it because said by somebody great how do you know that is the existence infinite what is the evidence for that where is the proof can you show me that it is infinite now this should be the questions that one should ask their teachers we don't see the infinite isn't it is it even possible to know if something is infinite or not given limits of our own knowledge and perception and intelligence if not then how come the teacher or the great master came to this conclusion that everything is infinite because the great claim is that once you know your own self you know everything so we can test this claim today how to find out if the existence is infinite and how to find out if it is finite so as usual we start with the words what do you mean by existence what do you mean by infinity this is how we start there is no other way to start you cannot get out of your house and start searching for the infinite existence somewhere out there when i say existence people picture this big universe in their mind with galaxies floating in the black space isn't it this is our conditioning remember what will be existence like from the point of view of a villager for example a tribal person in the jungle who has who does not have such notions who thinks that the stars are holes in the sky <laughs> from which the light of the heavens is leaking something like this you know different world view what will be the existence for that person or let us say some liberated mind where who has seen all the universes all the past present and future is in front of him what will he think about the existence so one thing you can uh, you know certainly say existence is dependent on the mind different kind of minds will think about existence differently it is not something which is objective which is simply out there and you can go and look at it and look this is the existence and i know what it is it is not like this it is an idea that's all it is if i can experience something it exists the word exists means to stand out so if i if i can experience something it exists and the sum total of my experience is what i call existence is that a good enough definition <laughs> because because it is subjective existence is subjective if i don't experience it does not exist and that word existence covers all that exists now you should not have any kind of doubt here uh, the things that do, are not experienced they do not form the existence you may have an idea about it an imagination about it but do not form the part of the existence so all that can be experienced comes under existence for example i say i i have a white elephant that can fly it is standing there in my backyard now is it a is a part of existence simply because i could imagine it because i i can put it in the language so obviously no because it is it exists as an idea the idea is the imagination is part of the existence because i can experience that idea you can also experience the idea but not the white flying elephant so we should not have doubts like this that i don't experience that this and that and so it but still it can be a part of the existence no it should not happen if you want to have any meaningful uh, knowledge of the existence it should be based on the experience so a totality of my experience is the existence and like i just said it is limited to what i can experience and the experience is limited to the five senses but there is more the mind is also there everything that goes on in the mind the experience of the internal senses the experience of the senses inside the body also there are three layers of experiences the first is what you call the world it is coming through the senses is obviously limited second is the experience of the body which is coming from the internal senses of the body and the third is the mind itself which is coming from the mental senses all of them are limited so if what i can experience is limited that means the existence must be limited like i can experience only this much 
so that you know totally falsifies whatever uh, the, that the question is saying you have the answer now look at the existence it is limited because only this much can be experienced are we forgetting something because the master will not say this just you know just for time pass he must have he must have done some great introspection this, this must be result of some insight you can give him benefit of doubt because he is the master so when we look at our ordinary experience it is very limited it is very finite now we can go deeper in this and try to find the limit of the experience where did the ex- ex- where did our experience start when did it start where is it going to end we have considered one dimension of the existence which is right now right here whatever the senses are telling us whatever is our current experience let's add one more dimension there the time is there a limit on what can be experienced you will see that even these five limited senses they are producing a lot of variety of experience your today's experience is different from yesterday's experience it is different from the experience that you had one month ago which is different from the experience that you had 10 years ago when you visited new place new experience now the place came came into existence now is there a limit to the places you will say yes the planet is the limit but then there is a whole universe there theoretically it is possible to experience that and then you you can say the universe is the limit but no there is more <laughs> if you are exploring the universal mind you know and this universe is only a tiny part of it so from these two angles you know that the current experience is limited by the kind the kind of experience is limited but the amount of the experience i cannot find a limit there yes it will come in form of pictures sounds and um the mental activity and the different kinds of bodies different forms but uh, that is one dimension of its limit but in the other dimension there can be many kinds of experiences i do not see something fundamental limit that look after this their the experience will stop is it possible can the experience stop you see when we go a little deep in such questions which looks like a tiny or any very innocent question is the existence infinite and you are expected to say yes or no but we don't do this <laughs> we also want to know the reason so when you go into the depths of such questions you will explore you will you will find some something fascinating that i did not even think that the experience can have dimensions like this that there can be different ways to check to to talk about the experience the current experience yes this one then there are types of experiences yes these three types then there is this temporal dimension i don't know when it started and then you the experiences of the universal mind which is not presently in the waking state and then you know suddenly that oh the experience is dependent on the mind and also dependent on the mental state see how much was learned simply by asking this question now it may look like that i stand nowhere now i am simply you know swinging from this branch to that branch like a monkey i don't stand anywhere you you must be in a hurry to find out what is the answer then well and that that is not the point isn't it the point of the introspection is to introspect <laughs> the answer may come may not come you get the insights so the deeper we look and the more fuzzy it becomes but you gain some insights so now i hardly know whether it is infinite or not because there are so many question marks there did it start somewhere because in order to be finite something should have a start isn't it i should be able to mark or look the experience or the existence is starting here and it is going to end here and there is the finitude there is the limit to it and now i i try to check my experience and i don't see anything like this i don't see a start of it i don't see an end of it it's not my direct experience and now you can uh, I question your assumptions because some people may have this kind of assumption that look the experience started as soon as i was born what is birth whose experience started did you had the experience of a body starting 
or did you have the experience of the experience starting you see a seeker should question like this it should be perfectly logical what was your experience of birth was it start of a body or was it start of an experience or both probably my experience started from the birth but since there was a birth and it existed in the existence the existence must be already there isn't it can you doubt about this no 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 everything was born at the same time <laughs> including my father mother and everything and that is probable it's a very far fetched isn't it because i don't have an evidence i do have an evidence of the experience of the others and if you ask your mother and father they will say well we were experiencing the world the body you appeared you were born the experience did not born it is very easy i cannot say that my experience is the only experience because there are others who will tell that no 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 i know more than you i am i exist before you arrived in the world so no the birth did not start an experience the birth started a body in the existing existence in the existing experience a new experience was born a new point of view was born hopefully that is not so illogical and what will be the end of the experience and the obvious answer is as soon as i die the experience is going to end but will that end the existence and uh, now you you can use the same logic as before as long as there is a conscious being experiencing something there will be an experience there will be existence it does not end with the death the body ends with the death experience i cannot find a beginning i cannot find an end so it it seems now logical to conclude that so oh, there is no end no beginning sounds like infinity now we are approaching this now so now you can add another dimension to the existence which is our well known experience sir it is not the ego the ego is an experience the ego is a part of the existence you cannot say that it's not there it is there so an experiencer must be the universal experiencer the same experiencer that is experiencing through all the bodies what has happened at the birth is that uh, the experiencer got one more point of view <laughs> that's all in the existing infinity of the existence the infinity was you can say perceived from one more limit limited point of view again this is the miracle of the birth the birth is not really a birth of a body the birth is appearance of a new point of view for this experiencer what is experiencing obviously there is nothing else there experiencer is a part of the existence so the existence is experiencing itself or you can say there is no separate reality which is experiencing this existence because it, it's not logical to say like this you see because if it is separate reality where is it how far away it is from this reality how wide is the connection between that and this so that it can experience this you see so as soon as there is a connection that means the one reality can experience the other reality that means there is a connection it, it is connected that means it is just one you need to just zoom out and oh look there's one and it, it is not logical to say like this what is logical is that the experiencer is a part of the reality and the existence in the form of experiencer is happening in this existence only this uh, this is you know other way of saying that there is only oneness there is no two so if we come to this uh, another dimension of the experiencer it is the existence itself it has this power you can say to experience itself so uh, if you examine this uh, new dimension of the experiencer here and uh, you can say that uh, whatever can be experienced is being experienced by the experiencer and the experiencer is now limited by this experience now if you take a look at the experiencer and try to find its limit yes the experience is limited what about the experiencer if it is limited you will see it look there is this limit here and then this limit will become an experience it won't fall in the category of the experiencer so <laughs> no matter what you do no matter how hard you try you won't find a limit on the experiencer there is no limit on the experiencing you can say just like the experiencing goes on the experiencer goes on there is you cannot find a limit how 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 are you going to put a limit on that which is experiencing it can appear as 
finite, limited, just like now it is appearing. It can appear as infinite, it goes on and on and on, the experience goes on and on. It can appear as that which is experiencing, it can appear as the mind, it can appear as the illusion, the ignorance in the mind, and so on. It is as if, you see, there is this, the existence is a bartender. You go there and it says, what would you like to have today? I am at your service. You say, I want something finite. And it will give you exactly that. The next day you come, I am in a total, total different mood. I want something infinite. And it will give you that. And the next day you come and say that, oh, I want something mysterious that I cannot know whether it started, whether it will end. And, okay, sir, this is your drink. The unknowable drink. And the other day you come, I want nothing. And it will say, okay, I have nothing to give you now. <laughs> Take this nothing. So did you get an answer? I don't think. I don't think there are any, any answers on the path of knowledge. But yeah, surely if you had any kind of um, uh, irrational assumptions, surely they are wiped out by now. <laughs> so yes, it is possible to show that it is finite. It is possible to show it is infinite. If you, And it is possible to show that it is unknowable. And now you cannot say anything about infinite, finite, anything. And then it is possible to show that there is nothing there to question about. If all my, all the ex existence is experience, and the experience is only the illusion of experience, then, well, there is nothing really. And then you can, you can argue like this, well, but yes, it, probably there is nothing, probably it's all made up, but there is the experience, sir which is witnessing these, these illusions. The witness cannot be an illusion. So it is not nothing. There is something. And now you feel that you I am very, very sure that there is a witness. There is a consciousness, awareness there. Whatever you want to call it now. The Atman, the Brahman, the Satchitanand, big, big names. Is it there? You can say the experience is the experiencer the Atman is the only thing that exists. Every other thing is non-existent. This is the great statement of Advait, Mahavakya, Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya. Why do, why do they say that? And that means it exists. That means something is there. That means something is happening, even if it is an illusion of happening. We are again in some kind of confusion here. If you say there is existence, it must be happening. If you say nothing is happening, then nothing should be there. There will not be anybody to put this question then. Is there anything happening? If there is a question, then there must be something that is happening. Now, I know this is a kind of trick question. This is a very deep question also. And I don't think you will get an answer. <laughs> but it's good to think like this. There is an answer that is in, that is again in the Buddhism, uh, which is, well, all the existence is emptiness. And now it is self-contradictory answer. So, if it is emptiness, how can you say it exists? Yes, that is a very, very good question. Who is asking the question, you see? That can be an illusion. The emptiness is asking, why am I, am I empty? <laughs> that which appears to be asking is actually not there. It's non-existent. There is only the emptiness. So it looks like that, well, it's, it's not going to be resolved. And um, that's why the Brahman is also called the unknowable, a gay. If you recall the hermetic philosophy, the all is unknowable, he says. This is not, not um, what you call limit of our intelligence. I can, I can tell you, you, you can think about this the question of existence for many, many years and you will arrive at this, this statement that all is unknowable. All is existence, isn't it? Just another word for the existence. So, just like I said, you can make it into anything you want. It will appear as anything. If you want, it will become finite, which is what it is for most of the people here. It starts with the birth and it ends with the death and in between, the, there is a narrow band of experiences. They happen in perfectly predictable, mechanical manner. This is, most of the people will say like this. This is the, you know, ignorance of the waking state. 
then if you want you can make it appear as something else if you explore more states of the mind then it will uh, take many many forms there is no end to it and therefore you can declare oh it is infinite which is also half truth isn't it because you yes, are it is infinite in some way there is no limit there but can something exist if it is infinite uh, also an unsolvable question unknowable question yes it can exist if it is finite you know it starts here it ends there i can see it in any form i want and uh, the experience is there and the finite things exist if it is infinite can it exist well i don't know and knowable yes the existence is infinite so existence does not exist then which is self contradicting statement oxymoron <laughs> oneness can be known only as duality now oneness can be known as finite things in chunks if you want to know the whole of it you it will look like infinite and then this questions will arise you know what kind of infinite it is can it really exist if it is not finite and if it is infinite well then only the emptiness can be infinite only if it is zero you can say it, it can be infinite it can appear as infinite so if it is zero that means nothing there is whatever happens is an illusion of some kind just be you don't worry whether it is infinite finite or how it appears and whether it is dual non dual whether it is or it is not and these these are you know all occupations this is all activity of the mind the final the ultimate is unknowable beyond mind so this is how we reach beyond mind you see are you there now are you on 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 the, on the place of beyond mind because the mind must have stopped by now <laughs> this is how we reach above knowledge when we try to know if you know that means it is an assumption it is guaranteed that it is a half truth and uh, a new b seeker will stop at the half truth an advanced seeker will keep on advancing keep on questioning and reach the not knowing not knowing is more important than knowing because it is the final place it is the final resting place for the mind as long as you know something that is all illusion so there is a saying again in advait that uh, when you know the self you know everything it, this does not really happen isn't it <laughs> uh, when you know the self uh, this need to know drops instead of knowing it is a state of being you know everything as nothing which may appear as finite and finite this that you don't care now it is all mind so what good are all these theories what good are all these you know knowledge that i accumulated very very fine kind of knowledge you see a very very logical systematic i know everything is it of any use it there is a use there is i am i am not going to say it is totally useless there is a use and throw kind of use that uh, this knowledge will uh, will take you to the place of not knowing the, the not knowing is arrived at through knowing once you know that i do not know you can drop the knowing <laughs>